Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. Merry Christmas Eve. We are less than, well, depending on where you live, uh, some hours away from Christmas Day. How exciting. Are you ready for old jolly Saint Nick? That's how it goes, right? I was about to say old Saint Nick. It is old Saint Nick. Jolly old Saint Nick. Jolly's first. Okay, my bad. So we are going to start off today's video with talking about how the format is going to go for next week while I'm out of town. There will be scheduled uploads. So it won't be the usual she goes live, we talk about the live kind of format. There will be some retro reacts and some other kind of content that I'm going to explain. Um, and then we are going to talk about something that was said on yesterday's live stream. I don't have footage of it, by the way. Maybe one of you do, or maybe some other channel has uploaded it and I don't know of it yet. But something was said on yesterday afternoon's live stream that has a whole lot of people in the community riled up. We're going to talk about that. And then we are going to be taking a look at Eugenia's latest TikTok uploads. Uh, more Santa baby, as you can see. Um, she went to some department store and did this. Uh, we're going to talk about it. But yeah, in terms of the format for next week and everything, it's just going to be vlog Christmas, vlog the 26th, and then there will be a live stream upload, I'm thinking Wednesday, Thursday. If there is not an upload, it is likely going to occur more later in the week. So if if nothing is uploaded, that'll probably be more like Friday, Saturday-ish. So just for format purposes and, you know, because I know a lot of you look forward to these uploads and everything, so I can't be leaving you in the dark. Can't do that. And then there probably will be some other uploads sprinkled in of some of the other content creators I cover on here, if you care. Okay, so we are now going to chat about the thing that was said on the afternoon stream of December 23rd. It was a quick one. It was a quick one. Um, I didn't get the notification that she went live. I don't always get the notification for some reason. Sometimes I do. I, I don't know if it's feeling it. TikTok will notify me, but I did not get those notifications, so I did not record it. Um, basically, what I what I have gathered was said along the lines that I'm paraphrasing, of course. She said something along the lines of recovery being possible. Recovery is possible. Um, it's it's definitely an option, um, something that's doable. But uh, along the lines of that, she twisted it into trolling the audience and saying, yeah, I need to recover from all these mean comments I receive. If we do get a hold of that footage, we will be taking a look at it. But it didn't sit well with a lot of people in the community. Um, it's one thing to come on here, do what you do, piss a lot of people off. It's another thing to come on here, do what you do, piss a lot of people off, and then play ignorant. What are you talking about? Uh, what? I have no idea what you guys are saying. What What are you... You're stupid. You're a moron for saying something like that. I have no idea what you're even trying to... It's one thing to do that. It's a whole nother thing to come on here, do what you do, turn around, shuffle your hands together, and snicker about it. That, in my opinion, the whole recovery is possible, you guys. Yeah, I need to recover from these mean comments. That is, in my opinion, the worst of the three. And this is something that she's not a stranger to. Um, you'll see in this TikTok in just a minute, she did it again. So there are examples of recent activity that Eugenia has uploaded to the internet of her just being a straight up troll. Um, it's not subtle anymore. 
It's not even along the lines of, what are you talking about? It is very brazen. It's very in our face. And honestly, this is very reminiscent of what was uploaded throughout last year when she went to Disney. There were a few uploads that Eugenia posted to her YouTube channel, and the titles of them were very misleading. Um, one of which was called, I'm going away for a while, dot, dot, dot. I'm going away for a while, dot, 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 would make a typical viewer of Eugenia Cooney think what? <laughs> so in that video, once you click on it, basically she disclosed that she was going on vacation. You see what I mean? Baiting, trolling, give, giving people a little bit of what they assume they're thinking of what the video is going to be about. And then, oh, I'm going to Disney with my mom. <sighs> and that wasn't the only one. That wasn't the only one. You know what? Let's pull it up, actually. All right, we have moved on over to YouTube. So here's what I'm talking about. This one, for example. I'm going away, dot, dot, dot. This one over here. Why I left, dot, dot, dot. The dot, dot, dot is exceptionally heinous, in my opinion. Over here, things are really bad right now, dot, dot, dot. Revealing my dark side. Uh, the answers to everything you've wanted to know. I'm changing my lifestyle, dot, dot, dot. I'm going away for a while, goodbye. We need to talk. Very... Troll-like titles, very clickbaity titles, this pisses people off. Because when you are someone who is, who is being observed and the immediate sensation or emotion that they feel upon laying their eyes on you is frustration, sadness, or sympathy, and then you take that and you crush it, and laugh on it, laugh at them, and spit on it, and throw it back at them. How do you think that that's going to come across? And don't tell me for one second, what are you talking about? I'm going away for a while. I just said that I was going to Disney. I'm going on vacation. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. It's weird. It's twisted. It's not, not okay. It's not okay. And really, this is the type of of content, and this is the type of stuff that I have discovered about Eugenia Cooney over the past several months of covering her that really, really rubbed me the wrong way. There are certain aspects that I'm sympathetic toward and I'm very understanding of from a conditional point of view, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, I really don't like it, and it is continuing to go on. People call it out. She turns around. What are you talking about? Continues to do it some more. So this went on very frequently throughout the last year. I mean, how, how many were there alone that she did this on YouTube videos that got hundreds of thousands of views? I'm going away for a while. One, two, three, four, five, six, se seven. Seven clickbaity videos like that. Doesn't look good. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. I mean, I don't see a lot of good looks on this program to begin with, but this especially is not a really good look. So we're going to go and take a look at the TikToks from yesterday and today and talk a little bit more about everything that she has been continuing to doing in regards to these kind of titles. Okay, this is the first TikTok. I'm just going to let it play while I talk. Um, we're not able to do it with music, unfortunately, because it will get copyrighted. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it play. She's standing next to some hot pink tree, it looks like. Now, I really think that this is either Lowe's or Home Depot, because Eugenia has already gone to Lowe's or Home Depot to do her Halloween photo shoot when she dressed up as the skeletal bride or the corpse bride or whatever that thing is called from the Tim Burton movie. She dressed up as that, went to her local Home Depot and posed with all of the Halloween decorations. If you go to one of those stores that I just described um, just a second ago, 
this time of year, they have a lot of inflatables. They have a lot of uh, decorations. They have a lot of things that people can go and see. It's kind of cool. I like going to Home Depot and Lowe's during this time of the year because it is fun to see a lot of the decorations that are for sale and everything. So this is what I think that this is. I think that the reason why Eugenia did not go to do the photo shoot at the mall like she has in past years is because she knew that she would get a lot of backlash. A lot of people were saying, girl, that look does definitely not belong in a mall. It certainly does not belong around people that are trying to get their holidays photos with Santa that have kids. Because when you think of people that go to get their photo taken with Santa, it's kids, right? You know, like, oh, photos with Santa. Like, ad- ad- like two adults would never go do that. It's, it's like, oh, let's take the kids to go do that. <laughs> so the fact that Eugenia is being driven there at 29 by Deb to get her photo taken with Santa, it's like, okay, you're really going out of your way to do this. You are really doing the most here. So this is why I think that she decided to go to Lowe's slash Home Depot to do this instead. Now, this is pretty low key, in my opinion, because in years past, Eugenia has gone to TJ Maxx in the Santa baby outfit. She's gone to the mall and gotten her photo taken with Santa. Been a whole lot of other places wearing this in the middle of winter. And I don't know, maybe it's because she got less shit for it in the past, but... This year, she seemed to have gone to a portion of Home Depot in the back, kind of where no one was, and had Deb film her like this. I bet you that she came in with some type of black trench coat or hoodie, so it appeared... I don't think she walked in the store like this. She may have. She may have. But as you will see in tomorrow epi- tomorrow, tomorrow episode, tomorrow's episode, actually, when she went into TJ Maxx last year wearing this exact outfit... She came in with a black coat. So she knows that it's appropriate to cover up. And then once she gets in and she's in her element and she's where she wants to be, the coat comes off, the Santa baby flaunting turns on. So this is uh, kind of what she decided to do this year in terms of Santa baby lingerie parading. Went to the back of Lowe's or Home Depot and did a little walk around with some music playing in the background while her mom filmed. This is not really the one that has everybody talking, however. This is just her kind of doing whatever. It's this one that has a lot of people talking. Now, go ahead. Go ahead. Look at the caption of this video. There are a million different Christmas songs that you could have selected. Jingle Bell Rock, Dancing Around the Christmas Tree, Walking Around the Christmas Tree. Well, I suppose you could dance around it too, but the name of the song is Walking Around the Christmas Tree. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman. There, There are so many options that you could have done a little walk around Santa Baby lingerie to. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. Eugenia wears this outfit into public in the middle of winter, and then it'd be one thing for her to turn around and say, oh, well, you know what? It's my prerogative. If I want to be cold, I'll be cold. If I want to wear this, I want to wear this. What's your opinion? I don't I don't give a shit about your opinion. I want to wear this. Okay. Could have turned around and said, what are you talking about? I'm not, I'm not doing anything wrong. What do, what do you mean? It's just, it's Christmas time. It's not a big deal. Why are you making such a big deal about it? So, could have done that. Could have done those things. What did she decide to do instead? She decided to do that third option that I talked about earlier. She decided to take people's sympathy, people's emotions, crumple it up into a ball, spit on it, and throw it in the trash. The fact that Eugenia used the song Last Christmas for this little walk around lip sync number. It's more of that same stuff that we just took a look at on YouTube. The whole revealing my dark side, answering everything you guys want to know, I'm going away for a while, dot, 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 goodbye. Last Christmas. Last Christmas. And I mean, you can see the top comment here. I mean, kind of my head's kind of in the way, but you can see the top comment. And that is exactly what she was going for. That was the reaction. That is what people were thinking. There's a reason why you selected that. So in my opinion, 
she's trying to be sneaky. She's trying to be subtle. It's kind of a little bit of like hand over mouth laughing. Like, (laughs) this is brazen. This is very in your face. It's not cool. It's not funny. It's twisted. This puts out a not so great image for you on the internet. And this is what people are talking about when they come on here and say, you know, Eugenia, I don't, I don't think, I don't like this. I don't like this kind of content on the internet, you know, should be consider age restrictions. Uh, she's quite literally laughing. She is laughing. She is snickering at people. She's doing it in people's faces. Again, it, it would be one thing to feign ignorance, to play dumb, to kind of be like, oh, what are you talking about? And like, just continue to gaslight people. This takes it a step further. This takes, I, this, this communicates to the audience, I know what I'm doing, I like what I'm doing, I think it's funny, I, whatever she thinks about it, I'm going to continue to do it. And it's been going on year after year after year. Seven examples alone on her YouTube channel from the past year. And now a TikTok upload last Christmas. All right. Well, that is that on that. Uh, We are all caught up in everything in terms of talking about what the community has been discussing from the afternoon stream in addition to the two TikToks. We are now going to be moving on into some live stream coverage from... Ooh, maybe five or six days ago. I'm thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About five or six days ago. And then vlog tomorrow, vlog Tuesday, more live stream coverage from Friday night, probably for Wednesday, Thursday, possibly Friday. So we'll see about that. All right, y'all. Let's move on over to uh, the TikToks. Well, we're already on the TikToks. Okay, let's just move on over to the other hotel. All right, I think about right here is where we stopped for last time. This goes till 1.15-ish. Yeah, 1.15-ish. So let's just get started. Like I can hear about myself, you know? So it's just kind of like whatever with like what some people say, you know? Oh, Erica! Erica, I love you. Erica, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I did not flash you guys. You guys making those kind of comments. Oh, now you guys want to go down that route. Ruthie, thank you with the snowman. Guys, I literally have shorts on right now. Like I have shorts on like, like underneath my shirt. So whatever some of you guys might think you saw, you did not see. Cause that's kind of impossible. We're like, I'm literally wearing shorts. I'm just saying. So yeah, sorry you guys that maybe wanted to see something, but I don't think you did. (sighs) Beautiful. Oh, did you notice that there? That's actually the first time that I've ever heard heard her say something along the lines of that. Well, maybe the reason why you guys are accusing me of doing that is because you wanted to see something, but you didn't see something. Mm, You know what I mean? Kind of turning it around and putting it back at the people that said it to begin with. Girl, no. No. That's not it and love your spirit oh that's so sweet thank you i pray over your well-being and health restoration oh thank you no need to worry because you know like really i really am doing fine like everything's good guys but i appreciate you praying for me and like being kind and i send like all love to you too so like thank you so much let's see if we can maybe get to 300k we're at like 261 Am I still trying to recover? No, guys, I'm I'm really not because I really feel like I'm doing fine, you know? So yeah, there's really nothing I gotta recover from everybody. I think I need to recover from some people's like comments, (laughs) honestly, (laughs) just kidding. But yeah, no, everything's good. Oh, I thought that this was in the Friday afternoon live stream. It was in this one. <gasps> oh. One more time. One more time. Am I still trying to recover? No, guys. I'm, I'm really not because I really feel like I'm doing fine. You know. 
So yeah, there's really nothing I gotta recover from everybody. I think I need to recover from some people's like comments, honestly. <laughs> Just kidding, but yeah, no, everything's good. Did you catch the just kidding as soon as she said that too? Just kidding. No. Took the mask off for a second, got in the face of haters, told them exactly what she wanted to say to them, and then put the mask back up and said, just kidding. <laughs> it's brazen. It's becoming really brazen. People are on your TikTok stream expressing sympathy, saying how they feel. And you turn around and say, well, I don't know about all that, but I think what I really need to recover from are the, all these nasty comments that are being said in the chat. So it's kind of really warped in a way because people express sympathy. She takes that, makes fun of it, makes a joke out of it, makes light of it. And then somehow, some way, she becomes the victim. Well, I actually need to recover from these nasty comments and all these horrible things people are saying about me in the chat. So it's really intricate, right? Because she is simultaneously making fun of someone's sympathetic comment and playing the victim at the same time. Huh. Huh. What, what gaslighting? What are you talking about? Girl. Girl. Oh, I guess I love these snowmans. Thank you everybody with the snowmans tonight. I love them. The snowmans. <laughs> I saw one of you comment uh, on the video from like four days ago or whatever. It said, every time I hear Eugenia say snowmans, I get irrationally angry, but at the same time, I don't know if it's snowmans or snowmen because my brain kind of melts from watching this. <laughs> oh boy, snowmans. Don't let the haters get to you, thank you. I really don't for the most part, guys. Like, honestly, I'm just kind of living my life. I think like sometimes a lot of people like, kind of act like they know everything about me, but in my life and how I feel and like whatever. B -b literally sits on stream for upwards of 12 hours some days. You guys think you know things about my life. <laughs> That's what always cracks me up about some of these public figures. They'll come on here, broadcast their whole life, share details about themselves over a span of 10 plus years, and then they'll come on here, scowl, and say, you don't know me. <laughs> Girl, sometimes people sit and watch you for 12 hours. What do you mean they don't know you? But they really don't. So, yeah, I'm just kind of living my life like the best I can trying to be the best person I can and everything. And yeah, you know, I think that's like all you can do sometimes really. How is your hair so long and beautiful? You're so sweet, thank you. I mean, I got it done earlier today, guys. So I do kind of feel like it looks a lot better after getting it done. Um, and as for like, like how long, I honestly just kind of don't cut it much. I finally got a haircut when I was in LA a little bit because I feel like it was getting kind of like the ends of it were getting kind of like stringy looking it just wasn't looking that great and it was kind of like eh, I think it's time and I honestly think it looks a lot better after like cutting it a little bit but I just don't cut it much and even when I do get cuts I don't like to cut it like a lot like I do more trims because I just like it really long so now I remember I didn't know that it was uh, when she was in L.A. for Jeffrey's thing, but I remember prior to the haircut, a lot of people in their chat were going really hard with the whole your hair looks gray thing. And she was apologizing for that and saying, OK, I, I, like kind of acknowledging what they were saying in a way and saying, well, I'm getting my hair done soon. So I don't know if it was like uh, a trim and a dye or what, but. Yeah. 
Guys, we're getting so close to 300,000 likes. Everyone, if you guys could keep double tapping the screen, that would be amazing, guys. Thank you, everyone, double tapping. My music taste? Hmm. I mean, it depends what I want to listen to, guys. Like, right now, we just kind of have some Paramore playing in the background. I love this kind of music, like this kind of, like, emo, like, warp tour, you know? I feel like that kind of music. Every time she does that, the, the air quotes when people say, like, emo or describe her as MySpace, what, what are you trying to do there with that? I mean... Eugenia, you, you are, you are like kind of like gothic -y, emo, myspace -y 2008. What's with the air quotes? My music taste? Hmm. I mean, it depends what I want to listen to, guys. Like right now, we just kind of have some Paramore playing in the background. I love this kind of music, like this kind of like emo, like work tour, you know? I feel like that kind of music, it will always be the best. Like there's only nothing else like it. It's so good. And I also like, like, you know, stuff that's kind of more pop. I like stuff that's kind of more electronic. Like it kind of just depends like what I feel like listening to really. What shoes am I wearing? I actually have such- mm. Stereo Love, Bring Me to Life, Alejandro, Bad Romance, Still Into You, Misery Business. If you gave me, if you gave me a pen and a paper in 30 minutes, I could probably have Eugenia's entire playlist written down. <laughs> oh, Avril Lavigne. Oh, we can't forget about Avril Lavigne. Oh, my God. Complicated. <laughs> oh, boy. What shoes am I wearing? I actually have such cool shoes on today, guys. And oh, my gosh, everybody. We just reached 300,000 likes. So everybody double tapping the screen. Thank you guys so much. Do you guys want to see my shoes tonight? They're actually really cool. They kind of like go with my outfit. I love them. Guys, I'm not trying to, how am I embarrassing myself? I'm just kind of talking right now. I understand sometimes maybe I'm like embarrassing or whatever, but right now I'm like, what am I even doing that's like embarrassing? All right, I'll show you guys my shoes. Get ready, they're really cool. Look, they're Powerpuff shoes. Guys, aren't these so cute? Look at that. Where, where, honestly, where do you buy something like this? <laughs> Platform strap-ons with the Powerpuff Girls City as the base of the shoe and the straps are the residue that the Powerpuff Girls leave behind when they fly away all superhero like where do you buy something like this <laughs> i mean honestly if you had to make me come up with a guess for that i would say hot topic but this just seems so unique so out there so specific it's almost as if these were custom made for her <laughs> And you know what? As I'm looking at these, you know what these would go good with? Sorry, go well with. These, uh, you see how it's like has a little bit of blue and a cloud in here and everything? This would match her uh, blue and white cloud hoodie from Jeffrey. You know, we've seen it before. The light blue and uh, white blotchy kind of hoodie that she wears. That would match. Uh Literally, like, this might be, like, my favorite pair of shoes ever. <laughs> like, I'm obsessed. See, it's got all the Powerpuff Girls, Townsville, the Sparkles. Aren't they cute? Yeah, I love those shoes. I think they're so cool. Those are so cool. Oh, my gosh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, guys, honestly, I am, like, obsessed with those. I just think, like, they're they're so, so cool. So... Yeah, I'm glad you guys like them. 
Can I walk around them? Yeah, I'm really good in heels and platforms, guys, yes. I actually think platforms are like so easy to walk in. What lipstick shade am I using? So guys, today, the lipstick shade that I'm using, um, it is- <laughs> I'm sorry, this really doesn't have anything to do with Eugenia Cooney, but there's a TV show I watch. Um, it's very similar to RuPaul's Drag Race, except it's like uh, more uh, special effects. It's more like um, horror themed. And they're, on that show, the judges hate platform boots or what they call club. They're, they're called club kid boots. I guess they, they were really popular in the 80s. But <laughs> it's just every time I see Eugenia's wearing these, I think of them because they despise those things with a passion. I mean, people have been disqualified for wearing those. <laughs> Someone wore those on the first season, or sorry, the first episode of last season and they got kicked out. <laughs> I, I, just, I don't I don't really have an opinion on them. Um, people have said actually that they're a lot easier to walk in than you might think. Um, so I guess there's that. I mean, when I look at those, they look like they're difficult to walk in, but apparently that's not the case. It's the Jeffree Star um, cavity shade. It's one of my like favorite pinks. I love this one. Hi, Generous! What's up? How are you? Act your age? What does my age act like, guys? I mean, guys, what am I even doing that's, like, immature? I'm just talking about makeup and, like, doing whatever. Like, some of you guys are probably more immature than I am, okay? Oh my god! I don't know. I mean, do any 29-year-olds care to weigh in? Um, I mean, I'm only 27, so I suppose I don't have any say in this, but what should or what does a typical 29-year-old lifestyle look like? Um, I, I don't know a lot of or have, have known of a lot of 29-year-olds that... Uh, I feel like anything I say is going to come out as mean, but... I do not know many people of or around Eugenia's age that has many similar characteristics to the type of lifestyle that she lives. That was a very diplomatic way to say it, wasn't it? That was, uh, yeah. I would do well in a pageant competition. I wouldn't be one of those people up on stage saying, I wish for world peace. I'd have a whole monologue. <laughs> Post-neurotic with the champion! Post-neurotic! Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, post-neurotic. Any age can act how they want. Exactly, Ashley. Like, I hate when people say that. I'm just kind of like, what does it matter how old people are? I just kind of think, like, everybody, like, why do you mean to somebody just, like, over their personality or whatever, you know? And if you guys are like so um you should be allowed to act whatever way you would like to at any age? No. No, 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 no. No. Um see that's kind of the thing about life in general. Um people do not typically freeze themselves in one frame of mind in life and sort of uh, decide to enter what you have described in the past as a fantasy world. Um, most people, well, first of all, they don't have that luxury to do that because life inevitably passes them by and they have to learn and they have to adapt and they have to become more fully realized, mature people that have to take care of bills and progress. So um, there's that. But in terms of accumulating more experience from life and just getting older, your brain develops more. Well, oh, gosh, we're hitting a slippery subject here. Um, and this is exact. This is a really good example. This is a really good example of something I was just about to talk about. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to refrain. And I'm going to 
let the premise of uh, the condition speak for the topic of what I was just about to get into. So childish or whatever. Well, okay, maybe I'm just kind of like a young-hearted person. I don't know, but this is just kind of, kind of how I am. It's probably just kind of how I'm always going to be, really. 30 years old and can't drive. I'm not even 30 yet, guys, but even when I am, I'm honestly still probably going to be pretty similar to how I am now. And if some people don't like that, like, I'm sorry, but this is just kind of me, I guess. I can drive, like, yeah, I don't always drive that often, but no, I got a, I got a license a while ago, so I can drive. <laughs> Jasmine, thank you so much with all the roses. I was about to say she did get the license. I I didn't think that she got a license. Um, actually, the 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 last video that I saw of her and Deb, sorry, she and Deb driving around, she failed it. She failed it. She said that it wasn't. I forget what happened, but yeah, she 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 basically told a story, something along the lines of, "Well, the driving instructor was really nice, <laughs> but she ended up failing the test. So I, I guess she went back afterwards and passed it again. I guess there's really no way of verifying it. I'm not saying that she's lying. I'm just saying there's no way to verify it." You're a 29 year old who still lives with mommy, doesn't drive, and has never had a job. Um, some of that's true. Yeah, I, I do live with my mom. Uh, I'm sorry to people that think that's weird, but you know, we do have a good relationship and stuff. So I guess right now I just kind of am living with her. I mean, sorry to people that think that's weird. Um, again, I can drive. People saying I can't drive, I can drive. And um, yeah. I don't know. I know I'm not perfect, everybody, but I mean, kind of is what it is with me, I guess. Ignore haters, thanks, Kaylee. <laughs> yeah, I try to not pay too much attention. Like sometimes I feel like people are really, really quick to like judge me. But, and it's like, I'm not trying to say like everything with me is like normal or that I am perfect or. And that's the thing about me. I don't need to be tooting my own horn here, blowing smoke up my own ass, but I'm someone that is not quick to judge people. Um, my opinion on Eugenia Cooney, I don't exactly remember the first video I put out on her. I want to say it was either in February or March of this past year, but my opinion of her has changed drastically. Um, it's sort of gone up on a roller coaster of how I have viewed her. And it's taken me uh, a bit of time to really understand who she is, what she's about, what she's interested in doing, and the way that she operates and functions. And I think for a lot of people in the stream as well, sorry, and a lot of people that watch these videos and comment and take part in community quarter and everything, um, we are still learning. Even today, we are still learning anything like that whatsoever you know but in terms of people that go in her chat and say superficial things like you still live with your mom at 30 and you don't drive yeah those would be kind of quick assumptions but that's not what we're about here that's not what we're about here we are t we are here to peel back the onion of what is eugenia cooney go down layer after layer have a deeper conversation, talk about things that otherwise in the past surrounding her channel has just been chalked up to people expressing comments with a lot of frustration and a lot of emotion. We're here to get to the other side of that frustration and emotion and to learn more. Because once you can identify what's going on and once you talk about it, once you form opinions about it, your back's covered. You know what you're talking about. But it's just kind of like, okay, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Post neurotic, thank you so much for the confetti. Oh my gosh, Kay Kelly, thank you so much for the snowman. Thank you. Good lord. Um, my mom was with her mom and I live with them too, taking care of each other. Exactly, Kay Kelly girl. I mean, my mom herself, guys, we were living with her mom for a long time. Um, Rashad, thank you with the heart me. Yes, because she was critically ill. Well, 
I keep catching myself. I do. I keep catching myself. But just the reasoning that she's providing here is entirely different. I, I mean, it is and it isn't. The reason why you and Deb were living with her at one point was to take care of her. But... All right, let's hear her out. Let's hear her out. Like my, my grandma. And then, um, you know, we were actually trying to just kind of like take care of my grandma for years. Um, then my grandma sadly like passed away like over the summer. But it's like you don't always really know like why people live together. And it doesn't always mean like, oh, you know, like you're like, y you know, like sometimes you guys say deflect 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 just stop already she didn't finish that thought she had a really hard time finishing that thought she's right when she says that you don't always know people's living situations you don't always know why someone is living with another person or living with their parents or whatever um it could be for a multitude of reasons um, the assumption that people are coming at her with right now is you're unable to take care of yourself. You're pathetic. You're a 29 year old that still lives with mom. They're trying to come at her with this sort of angle. But what she's trying to do is communicate to her audience. Well, that actually isn't the case. You guys are too quick to judge and you don't always know why people are living with one another. And then she tried to provide the example of, well, we used to live with my grandma actually, because we were taking care of her. So what she's doing is she's telling the audience, you don't know the real reason why I'm living with Deb. You do not know the real reason why I'm living here. You think you do, but you don't. But it, it, it's just kind of, um, I, I guess, ironic, maybe, that she, the example that she provided was that the fact that they had to live and take care of the grandma so the reason why Eugenia lives with the mom is for an undisclosed reason that the audience doesn't know about. But I mean, we all know why she lives with her mom. It's it's just, I don't know, ironic, I suppose. I, I'm not deflecting once again. You could even say that like my mom like lived with like her mom and, and I lived with her too. Like I said, like, guys, it's not me deflecting. Like my grandma actually did pass away over the summer. Um, it's. And then intertwining a little bit of victim complex into all of this. There is a reason being provided. And then uh, the whole thing about, well, you know, my grandma. She has somehow turned a an attack on her into, well... I used to live with my grandma or my mom used to live with her mom. And it was because that she was sick and, you know, she actually passed away recently. It's, it's taking this conversation and kind of putting a curveball on it and telling people to look in the other direction, it just completely removing herself from the original topic of conversation. Um, what I think would be a, the best approach to this or the greatest um, sort of, I, I don't know, kind of stand your ground. If, if you kind of stand your ground, I think that regardless of the situation, people would respect you a lot more. If you sat on that pink couch and told your audience, yeah, I live with my mom. I do. And, and that makes me immature. That makes me underdeveloped. That makes me pathetic. Okay. That's your opinion. Thank you for sharing your unwanted opinion. If she did that, that would be respected a lot more than all of these little avenues and corridors she's trying to go down and pointing people in different directions and talking about how her grandma passed away. And it, I just, I'm a straight shooter. I'm a straight shooter. And when people start to put a spin on things and they start telling you to look in other directions, it's just, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? So it makes me think that you actually are insecure about the topic that you're talking about. Whereas if you just came on here, owned it, said the way that it was, it, it would tell me you're more confident, but whatever. It's still really sad, especially like around Christmas time. It's kind of like, you know, it's like our first Christmas, like without her around. So it's definitely kind of like weird. 
and I know my mom is bad and kind of like it's kind of a hard time for her in a lot of ways um, but it's just kind of like you know it's not deflection it's literally like that's an actual passing and we were living with her for a long time she so, so what what is she trying to say here she lives with Deb because it's been hard on Deb to lose her mother. So Eugenia, in a way, is looking after Deb? What? I, I just don't understand the introduction of people originally saying you live with your mom at 29 to now talking about how Christmas time is difficult for you all because your grandmother passed away. It's you see what I mean? You see what I mean? Like this, this is such a curveball. Trying to take care of her and stuff and just trying to like help her out. Cause even before she passed, like there was a lot of things like my grandma was going through. So it's like, no, that's not deflection. That's like actual facts of my life. <laughs> and you guys that are like, stop with the sob story. I'm not trying to say, like say you feel bad for me. Um, you know, like I also feel like I was really lucky to get to have my grandma around as long as I did. Um, but you know, just like a lot of people I think do. Um, Rachel, I love you, thank you. Um, my family was just kind of, you know, trying to like help take care of her and do as much as we can. I'm not at all saying like, oh, feel bad for me, like anything like that. Moonlight, thank you so much for the snowfall. Like I'm not at all asking for that, everybody. I don't think that you want people to feel bad for you in this scenario, but I think that you want to use a topic that has nothing to do with what people were originally saying to your defense. Because when you talk about things such as a grandparent passing away and your family experiencing grief, that's sort of an ironclad response. That's something that someone really would never make fun of. That's something that really people wouldn't be critical of because of the nature of the subject of what you're talking about. So what I think that you're trying to do is you're trying to introduce this ironclad subject of your grandma passing away into something that has nothing to do with what people are talking about, which is very manipulative. I'm just kind of saying, like, you know, that some of you guys are like, oh, deflection, like, whatever. It's it's really not. It's literally just, like, actual facts of, like, my life, you know, and things that, like, actually, like, have gone on and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. Yeah, I'm okay. You know, obviously, I think something like that, like, it's always going to be sad, like, losing someone that you've been really close to and had around for such a long time. Like, it's always gonna be a sad and hard thing to like go through. But that isn't me saying like, Betsy, thank you so much with the hand tarts. That's never me though, guys, like saying any- And you know what? After watching all of this, this really is in true Eugenia fashion because with Eugenia, she is not someone that likes to look problems in the face and address them. She does not like to go over the fence, so to speak. She likes to go under the fence or around the fence to get through the problems. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. What I said earlier, had she said what I you know, suggested earlier, that would have been going through the fence or going over the fence. This whole stuff about... It's almost as if when presented with conflict... Eugenia thinks to herself, how can I get out of this? How can I escape this? How can I, what tools of manipulation or gaslighting can I use to escape or evade this conflict that I've been presented with? It, it, it's never the straightforward path. It's never, okay, this is a problem. Let me deal with it. This is how I'm going to deal with it. It's, it's always like, what can I do to, to sneak around it? Or what can I do to get out of this? How can I slip through the cracks? It's just interesting. Because, I, I don't know, it just kind of reminds me, like, if you've ever known someone in real life that can never be wrong, you know, people that, that can literally never be wrong, they always have an excuse for everything. It's always someone else's fault. Um, it, it's just interesting how some people view conflict and why they have a tendency to address it the way that they do.
when for me, I see it completely different. Anything like, you know, like feel especially bad for me because I lost somebody, you know, like I know a lot of people do go through, like everyone goes through that kind of thing and it's hard, but I'll always be really grateful. How am I embarrassing myself, guys? You like stop embarrassing yourself. I'm just kind of like, guys, listen, I'm sorry if you think I'm embarrassing. Um, I'm just talking about like some actual things in my life and trying to explain myself on why I feel the way I feel, I guess, about certain things um, and stuff like that. Stop it, you're being so real. Thank you, Candy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just honestly being real with you guys and about like some of my feelings. I think that you're using feelings that some people would... Th this is very along the lines of toxic positivity because what she's doing is she's talking about how her grandma passed away and how that made her feel and how she's coping. And again, it's an ironclad sort of topic of discussion. No one... Because you look like an asshole or you look like a dick if you're going to talk about Eugenia's grandma passing away. But what I think you're doing is... You're being manipulative because you're talking about something and you're using a subject that is very serious and a lot of people, you know, wouldn't dare try to pick apart. And you're trying to apply it to something else in your life to sort of to sort of prove a point. So for people who really don't think about this and just come in and hear you and think like, oh, yeah, okay, uh, grandma passed away. Oh, when someone passes away, you need to be really sympathetic and you really need to be thoughtful and mindful of those kind of people because they're going through a lot and everything. Okay, let's give her a free pass on everything. Uh, uh. I mean, if the shoe fits Cinderella. However, I do not think that this platform boot fits. I know I'm always awkward, guys. I know, okay? Listen, sometimes I think that's just kind of like my personality and how I am. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry if it's like annoying, but you know, I'm just kind of, you know, saying like things that are part of my life. I smile when I'm lying. I'm not lying, guys. I'm just kind of trying to stay positive through like what some of you guys say to me, honestly, okay? It's like, I'm not lying. I've been literally talking about like my grandma, like past. Mm. She said it herself. She said it herself. She's trying to stay positive through all of this crap that people are sending her in the chat. All of this nastiness that people are spewing at her. She's just trying to stay positive. What you're doing here, in my opinion, is expressing something that is very close to toxic positivity. When you're taking something completely out of context and then applying it so that you can win the argument, that's manipulative. I think that that might just straight up be manipulation. That's not toxic positivity. It's just, but she said it. I'm just trying to stay positive. That's what she always does with a lot of things. As long as I stay positive and as long as I speak this way and as long as I smile, you guys can't come for me. That's just it. I win. You lose. Sorry. But when you identify it and you talk about what she's doing right here. Passing away because people kind of like brought me to talking about this. So there's nothing I'm lying about here. I'm just kind of trying to, you know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Really talking about like my grandma like passing away because people kind of like brought me to talking about this. Oh my god, this has really come full circle. People have brought me to talk about this. It's come full circle. The beginning of the circle was when people started to say, You're 29 and you live with your mom. And what she did was she took the story or the context, the information about her grandma passing away. She used it to apply to the situation as a sort of defense against these people calling her pathetic for still living at home at 29. And then now we here are, we're, we're back at the beginning of the circle. You guys made me do that. 
you guys made me talk about my grandma passing away so that I could escape the criticism that you're sending me right now. People brought me to this. This is your fault. So she's blaming the audience for her own decision to apply manipulation in the face of criticism. It's really complex. It's really intricate. But I think that I did an okay job of just mapping out what we have been listening to the past few minutes. People brought me to this. It's your fault. It's because because you said that to me, I had to come up with some story or some information on the spot to use as a defense. Because you all came in here, pointed your finger at me, and said you're 29 and pathetic for still living at home, you made me apply this evading technique so that I could get out of this and not look as how you are describing me. You brought me to this. Oh my God. Whoa. Whoa. So there's nothing I'm lying about here. I'm just kind of trying to, you know. And then when I start talking about that, then it turns into, oh, sob story. When I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just talking about something that's literally like a fact of my life. Catherine, you're so sweet. Catherine, thank you for always being so nice to me. I really appreciate you so much, Catherine. Grogu, how are you, Grogu? Grogu, it's so good to see you in here. Thank you so much for the heart, me, Grogu. And then immediately after that whole debacle, after her getting really frustrated and being at a loss for words and blaming the audience, she went into subscriber-only mode. Immediately went into subscriber-only mode. And then they had a little chat in here about like, oh, get rid of the haters, don't listen to the haters, all that kind of stuff. It's like old Paramore. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, Vanessa, thank you for joining our team. Thanks, Vanessa. Please age restrict my content. Melissa, why are you subscribed? No offense. I'm sorry, but I will not be age restricting my content because I'm literally not doing anything that requires that. Chrissy, right? I know, Paramore is the best. Oh my gosh, Dice did, happy weekend. And what that means when she goes into subscriber only mode that is if you wanna say something quote unquote negative to Eugenia, you have to pay to do it. You have to pay to be a subscriber. So by getting rid of the haters, it's getting rid of the live chat not allowing just anyone to say whatever they want. So when she's in subscriber-only mode like this, th this, there are a lot less haters, such as Melissa, who just said you should age or stick your, your content. And the fact that someone is subscribed to Eugenia and said something in her eyes as negative, sh her question is, why are you subscribed? Why are you here to hate on me? Why are you here to say anything to me that isn't positive or uplifting or encouraging? Why are you here just to say things like that? So it, I'm guessing that it kind of surprised her that people will even go to the lengths to pay her to speak their mind. Happy Saturday or, oh, it's Sunday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> losing track of the days here but um yeah thank you so much happy weekend to you all right y'all i think that is going to be it on the rest of this episode there are about six minutes left of this but honestly i i scanned through it and everything a lot of it is just, well what happens is jeffrey comes in he sends her a pegasus or something and she goes absolutely ape shit and starts to talk about jeffrey so really the last of this live stream right here is just all about like oh jeffrey 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 so let's uh conclude here um, thank you for making it to the end. Thanks for watching. As always, let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below, and we will continue the conversation in the next Community Corner. Have a wonderful Christmas, everyone. I'll see you soon.